Welcome back, everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman. We're going to talk about how we can mix and match different active record queries. So we've kind of already seen this a little bit. We talked about find, where, include, order, limit, offset, joins, group, having, and we've already been mixing and matching. You know, we've we've seen where price is equal to five and where name is equal to Apple and where orders created that and we're going to limit by 55 and we're going to join users and then we're going to see all of the users named Richard. So, you know, we can we can add and we can do all these things and we can just keep on going and we can just add keep on adding all of these different, um, different elements. So, uh, but you know, what, what really is going on um, in the background. So each method that you add takes the output of the previous and adds to it. Um, so maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. Let's, uh, let's take a little bit of a more of a look into it. Um, really, the question we're asking is, when do we call the database? Maybe you didn't consider this before, but as, as we are building this, we, so we have to call the database at some point in time. And... Um, Active Record uses lazy loading in terms of querying the database. So, you know, what exactly does that mean? It means if we call something dot where dot limit dot order dot offset, you know, it's not going to make a SQL query every single time. So, you know, do, have we made a SQL query yet? No. Have we hit the database yet? No. Um, what about now? No, we still haven't. Uh, we, you know, we can keep on going. We, we, we still have not made that database call. But we, we obviously know at right, right now, all we're doing is we are building up the query. So the qu total query we want is the one that is the, um, the product of all of these different methods, all of these different statements. So. Uh, how do we know whenever we're done? How do we know when we are done building those queries and we can safely call the database and say, yes, this is the, this is the query I want? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, just a heads up, the, the way that we store that relation or store that SQL is with this thing called an active record relation. Um, so as soon as you build it, so you called you called product.where price is equal to five, it is going to return back this thing called an active record relation. That it hasn't hit the database yet. As soon as we call a method on it, um, a, a select set of methods, then it will say, okay, you instead of you're not going to add anything else to me. What you are going to want though is to get some data back from the database. So if we have prods equals product.where price is five. If we call prods.first, then it's going to actually return back a value from our database. So this is where it, it's actually going to say, yes, I'm, I now know you are done building this query. I now I'm going to run out to the database. I'm going to do whatever I need to, whatever you told me to, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring you the first of these products where price is equal to five. So here we are building our SQL. We are building an active record relation. We're, we're building the SQL. And then here, whenever we actually hit that first method, that is where we are executing the SQL. So we are actually making the round trip to the database. Uh, we are performing a query. It's coming back. And then we are building an object. So, uh, you know, we obviously we've been doing some other queries that haven't involved first. So what else can we use that can trigger this database query? Well, we can use all will trigger a database query. We can use each will trigger a database query. And again, these are methods on the active record relation. Um, so, you know, this is just kind of a, a, an example. We can do first all count each. All of those will actually create and cause us to hit our database. So the, this, this has two benefits. You might be wondering, hey, why? You know, why do we even have this? Um... So we've got the ability to string together these methods so we can build. We can say where, order, limit, joins, and this is collectively, it's coming through and it's, it's building up these, um, these relations, and so we can keep on going. It, it adds a nice syntax. It looks kind of similar to SQL. Um, it's just pleasant to work with, honestly. Uh, another thing is there are performance benefits with this, you know, if we end up building some SQL, we build up this relation, and we end up not actually calling it inside of our view, then, hey, it never hits the database. 
it's not going every time we hit the database it's going to take you know at least a couple of milliseconds uh, in you know best case scenario worst case scenario it could take a lot longer than that so the the best database query is the database query you never have to make. So it's um, on one hand, it's saving a, it's a little bit of a performance optimization. Um, we're only loading that data from the database when, when we need it, and that's what I mean by lazy loading. Another one, it gives us this nice domain specific language that we can kind of string together these methods, which is um, which is also very convenient. Um, we can, in addition to that, we can do some fun things like we can add. We can build up SQL only if certain conditions um, uh, apply to a given, uh, you know, given parameter. So conditionally, we can we can add in in uh, conditions. Well, yeah, it makes sense once you use it. All right. Uh, so after you've hit the data, you will always have an array or an object. Well, an object is an array, but you understand. Hopefully, uh, so you, you know it's either going to be a user object or a product object, or it's you know an array of those user objects or product objects or whatever type of an object you're looking for. It could also be nil, it could also be an empty array. Yeah, those are definitely options, but it will no longer be a relation as soon as once it's hit the database, um, and that means that you can't call those methods, you can't call those active record methods on the array that you get back. If you're curious, let's uh, take a look. So if we are saying product.where price is equal to 5, and we're setting that to a variable of prods, what happens if we put prods.class? Well, um, do you see a where? Or sorry, do you see a first or a last or a count or an all? So we haven't hit the database yet. So prods.class is going to be an active record relation. What if we do put prods.all? All dot class. So this all is going to trigger the database query, and by saying all, we are going to bring all of the products back that have a price of five, and that's going to return in a data structure. What data structure is that going to be? Well, it's going to be an array. So that's going to be an array of products. Makes sense. Um, you bring back all of the products. It's going to be an array of products. All right. What if you were going to try to run this? You say prods dot all dot where name is equal to apple so we've got price equals five dot all dot where name is equal to apple so just just think for a second so prods dot where price is equal to five is a relation so we know that and then prods dot all is a eh? it's an array so then we're calling on that array we're calling where name is equal to apple so as it happens that Array doesn't know what where is. It, we've already have the data coming back from the database, so we can't add additional things to it. Um, if you wanted to fix this, we would just put move the all to the end. So it would be prods dot where name is equal to apple dot all, and that would fix that. So I guarantee you, you are going to run into this when you are building SQL queries. You're going to say, wait, wait, wait a second. You know, of course I know that I've got this where you know method. It says undefined method where, and then you you look in. It says for array. Oh, okay. So array doesn't you know doesn't know what where is. That's that makes a little bit more sense. Um. All right. So the uh, you know pretty m mostly concludes what we've been talking about. Active record. Uh, it's definitely powerful. It's flexible. Does most of what we want. Uh, the next section that we are going to talk about. Uh, is going to be SQL injection. So stay tuned.